Hello and you're very welcome to the Shamrock Podcast. I'm John Wilkinson. Of course, the podcast brought to you by orgrechtly.com. Use the program Shamrock Podcast to get 15% off on the website. And today I'm joined by former Cork All-Star, Danny Gurling, to talk about last weekend's action and this weekend's action. So, really looking forward to chatting to Dan today. Dan's first podcast of the year. So, good to have you back, my man. Good, good to be back, yeah. Um, looking forward to getting into it. Uh, I was in Parky Creek yesterday. Um, it was a disappointing result, but a good performance. So um, I think Cork are on the right track, hopefully. And um, I suppose things are heating up a bit in the National League. Now you can see which teams are, I suppose, playing well and which teams are under pressure already. So it's, um, it's an interesting few weeks ahead. Great stuff, great stuff. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And I suppose, obviously, have you enjoyed maybe, what did you, obviously, I was talking to you last July, and obviously the season would have been wrapped up after July, I suppose. What did you make of maybe the first try and error experience off that, maybe the season being over nice and early? Um, look, I'm still playing with my club, so it's, it was great for me, to be honest. It's, um, it's nice to have your, your inter-county lads. We three on the inter-county team last year, and it's nice to have them back training with you the full time and, they're not they're not prepping for championship the, the night before the game like so it was it was great to have them back. Um, look, I suppose it's, there's going to be no right answer here. I think we've we've talked about it enough before. Um, the shop window for the intercounty season probably isn't big enough, but at the same time you have to give the club players the the respect and time they deserve as well. So um, just a huge amount to play, huge amount of clubs, huge amount of games to be played. So I suppose it's it's a compromise. Um, Albeit, as we said, your 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 main games aren't in the shop window long enough, but at the same time, your club is where the foundation of the J is. So I suppose all, all club players need to get um need to be looked after too. And look, I think the the, the standard of club J is lifting and lifting as well. I think um I suppose TG Carr especially are doing a great job of, of promoting the club game um games on every weekend. So look, there's still J in the shop window. I suppose just not your the county stuff. Mm-hmm, absolutely, of course you made. You spoke very well in TG Carr yesterday. What was that experience like with you and Donald O'Connor? Oh, it was grand. It was going down memory lane. Um, I was saying to my nearly had to read match reports on the way. It was like 13 years ago. We were trying to remember what happened. Like So, uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. It was nice to think back at the good old days and see the clips on, on TG Carr after. You'd forget all that happened, I suppose. Like, life goes on and you're playing with your club and your family and kids and stuff. You don't think, you don't think about the past too much. You don't have time to. So, it was, it was nice or to, to catch up with Dunn again and go back through the good old days. Mm, absolutely. Apparently, if you and figures just went up tenfold, apparently, yes. So. <laughs> I think, I think <laughs> the camera adds ten pounds as well, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it was brilliant. It was brilliant because I, I was just saying off air, I just came back from my uh, lunchtime walk and it, it was great to see Dan on TV. It was brilliant to see some lads in the group chat give you a nice week dig as well but no brilliant yeah. great stuff man and long may it continue I suppose Dan we can crack in to last weekend's action we I'll read out the uh, Division 4 and Division 3 results so on Saturday in Division 4 in Ockram it was Wicklow 116 London 19 Oshie McConville has finally got off mark in Division 4 with a very good win over a quite a good London outfit, of course, Enda Lynn, former Derry player, player for London these days. So that's quite a good win for Oshin and the Wicklow Lads. And then moving on to Mark Fitz Park on Sunday, it was Sligo, 21 points, Waterford 12 points, 10 point win for Tony McAdee. That is a great win, but obviously Waterford are down a lot of men. And then moving on to Netwatch, Colin Park, it was Leash, 117, Carlo, 2 8. That's a great win for for Leash and they badly, badly needed it. And then moving on to Chadwick's Wexford Park, it was Wexford, 19 points, Leitrim, 15 points. Finally, Wexford have got a win on the board. Andy Moran looked very disappointed after the game yesterday, four point loss, and he definitely would have been expecting the win there, but Wexford will be delighted. And then I will move on to uh, the, the Division 3 results in FBD Semple Stadium. You had a win for Antrim. It was Antrim 119, Tipperary 14 points. Great win for Antrim away away from home as well. Semple Stadium, not an easy place to go to, but of course Tipperary down. Mickey Quinn living and Connor Sweeney. So huge losses for the Tipperary member. Kevin McGarty is apparently on the drink since that game. We'll have to get him on the podcast to give him a touch about that. And then we will move on to Division 3, Dan, in Edinburgh. It was Fermanagh 2-14, down 3-10. Great win for Fermanagh. Huge score game. Sean Quigley obviously got the all-important goal at the very end. Fermanagh will gain a lot of confidence from that. And then Quigley's still going by in fairness. Big big Sean Quigley, Dan. Hard to be. Get get into the big man. Get into the big man. 
long as long as high long and high as Kev says, and then we will move on. Oh, here we go, Dan. Kingspan, Breffley Park. It was Calvin one nineteen, Longford eleven points. We're still swinging from the chandeliers, Dan. Yeah, yeah. Look, um, I think we said it off air. I suppose your business is to get these games won and get out of this division and get back into Division Two, really, isn't it? Um, yeah. Was after after again Tangent Cup final, you're you're on the cusp of a division. You're a good division two team probably if if everything's going right for you. So look, I think it's a case of going about your business and so far you've been doing it, getting it done. Mm, yeah, no, that's a great win, yes. And I think we are really proving too strong for that division. And then in the last game of the weekend in TG Cusick Park, Westmead 212, awfully 12 points, obviously Midlands Derby. Westmead came out on top once again. Good win, two goals, and obviously it would have been a very close game, but uh, Daisy Dolan will be absolutely thrilled with that. It's a great win, especially in Cusick Park. Home is where the heart is. And then we can move on to Division 2, Dan. In round three, obviously, Obeg, it was. Derry 2.15, me 1.7. This game was live on RT, Dan. Um, I don't know, did you get to see it or not? Conditions were absolutely woeful. Um, I think Rory Gallagher and Conor Rock. We wrapped the pitch with the, with the conditions. Yeah. yeah. Even the cameras, they were white beam every two seconds. It must have been brutal up there. It, it looked brutal, Dan. And it, it's, it's funny, even Rory, Rory and... Colin Rourke were just a bit fit to shake hands after the game. I think maybe that was uh, weather conditions. But look at Derry, 215 in the conditions that it was. Rory Gallagher, he is getting a serious bounce out of them lads once again. Absolutely. Uh, look, um, I probably fell into the trap of writing them off a bit this year. I thought that they might have overachieved last year, but uh, definitely being proved wrong so far. Um, Rory Gallagher is building a serious momentum there and he's, he's adding to the panel a bit and even... I suppose they, they were a bit reliant on McGuigan last year, but they've they a huge set of scores again this week and um they never gave they never gave me the chance. Mead never got into the game at all. Um missing tackles defensively, kind of very, very naive at the back and, and Donegal or Derry ran through them. Um even the first goal Eaton Darty got there's there's no way he should have been getting in where he was on the end line. Um yeah, but look, as, as I said, Derry, Derry are turning into a bit of a powerhouse now and they're going to fancy having a scalp off Dublin as well, I think. And I've not, I've no doubt Rory Gallagher in his head is thinking we'll take we'll take a lot of beating in this league and we're getting out of this division. That's that's the goal, I'd imagine. You can see the way they've hit the ground running with this. Um, they're, they're going to be hard to stop, to be fair. Mm. Yeah, like I suppose kind of going into this, like Mead would have been one of the, the potential promotion candidates, and you know, Conor Murray cannot be happy. He will not be a happy man this week. Like I, I wouldn't say there was a massive split between Derry and Mead, but like Mead to kick that many points in a game up, but I know conditions were horrendous, but Derry acclimatised to things very well. But Rourke would not be a happy man this week. No, he won't. They they had four points scored after fifty minutes, um, and that's not me. That's not that's not good enough. And when you consider against Cork, they played lovely. Oh, you know, there were good weather conditions, but they played open football, expansive football. And here it was just mistake ridden, um, poor poor options up front, giving the ball away too easily. And look, Derry's Derry's defensive system just gave them no chance at all. And I think um, I suppose we're we're used to this from me over the years. Um, even in McEntee's time, they're Jekyll and Hyde. They're either brilliant or they're they're very poor. There's no there's no consistency with them. And I think, look, obviously Colm O'Rourke is just in the job this year and it's going to take a while for him to bring that level of consistency. But I suppose that they need to start they need to start developing it. Or I suppose these seasons they go fast, so you don't want to be wasting wasting every game as an opportunity to improve. And look, this was definitely one they didn't take anyway. Mm. Yeah, Rory Gallagher will be delighted with that, and that's definitely putting them and um, Dublin in the promotion race, and it'll be a very interesting next couple of weeks. But geez, that is just very dour stuff by me. And we'll move on to Sunday's action in Division Two. Dan, of course, you were at this game, of course, in Park Cueve. It was Dublin eighteen points, Cork two ten. We just we we're obviously speaking off air about how close Cork were. You know, obviously Dublin bringing on the likes of James McCarthy and, you know, Jack McCarthy All-Stars and you can bring them gents on, you're always going to have a bit of a chance to see at the game. Cork were so close, Brian Orley's chance at the end. Small margins, Dan, questionable referee and decisions as well, but what was your thoughts on this game? Yeah, look, I, I think you'll be pleased from a Cork point of view. Um, I know we lost the game, but 
I suppose we're improving game by game. Um, there was a bit of a buzz around the county. Again, there was 10,000 at that game yesterday. I haven't seen 10,000 at a Cork League game. God knows, I'd say not even in our time was there 10,000 at a Cork League game. So um, there's a bit of buzz in the county. Um, Cork played well. Um, do you know what they very unlike them with the last couple of years, they had a lot of kick passing and they actually unlocked the Dublin defence a few times with kind of good kick passes into Hurley and into Chris Oak Jones and they were they were um they were dangerous in there and look Dublin were the same as always, methodical. Um I suppose got their scores a bit easier than Cork. Cork nearly played above themselves, whereas Dublin were playing to their system and playing within themselves a bit, but just about doing enough. But yeah, look from from a Cork point of view, there was um, a lot of good performers there, and Matty Taylor was very good. Luke Fahey, a lad from Ballincollig, he's young. He he was in the team, very impressive with him. Um, and up front, Hurley was flying, and yeah, look, um, I think I said that you are fair. I think even the Mead, the Cork Mead game, Cork were the better team that day. They, they just conceded three terrible goals, but they still scored eighteen or nineteen points. So mm. look, I think John Cleary's bringing a bit of steel about them. Um, uh, there'll be ups and downs, but I think, look, uh, the big thing now for them is to respond against Limerick now again next week um, and put in another good performance to get a victory there and get on the road again. Mm. You know, and if, if it was a cracking game of football, it has a lot of action. And if we were kind of saying off air that, you know, it is good to see Dublin kind of back to the pack. And maybe we were saying maybe five, six years ago, that game could have been out of sight at half time. And it like, really is great to see Cork give such good account of themselves. And, you know, they really held up their end of the bargain because the Cork supporters came in the numbers, 10,000 were at it. You know, with the putting in a great performance, the crowd was there. So Cork, fingers crossed, David, from your point of view, point of view as well, Dan, you know, Cork can really start building momentum after that game. Yeah, look, like like good anything, you just want to see improvement, I suppose, with the last couple of years with Cork, you a good result followed by a bad result um, or a bad performance. And I suppose a bit like me, you want to see a level of consistency every day. And I think, look, they're getting that now. Um, I think no one would have expected them to go up to Newbridge last or two weeks ago and get that result. So um, it's three pretty decent performances where the goals conceded against Mead. And I suppose even they were down three or four points yesterday. And Years previous, they might have wilted, but look, they kept at it. Matty Taylor got a great goal, and like they they pushed on then again, and um, could could have snatched the game probably. Um, Dublin probably on balance just about deserved to win it, but they could have snatched the game at the same time. And um, I suppose, as you said, very questionable refereeing decisions um, for both for both teams. But um, another interesting thing to funny no, like you'd have. The dubs, both dubs and Cork conceding kickouts totally and just getting back the pitch and setting up. It's like when you see Dublin doing it, you see things are changing. It's funny, like, because yeah, they, yeah. they were pressing for the first five, ten minutes and then they just left it off and started. It was nearly a case of setting up and delaying attacks as opposed to getting caught up the field. So mm. it was one aspect of the game I couldn't get over. Like the two, the two keepers, their stats must be through the roof because they're, they're essentially kicking it out to the corner back and starting off an attack again. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is very, very interesting. I suppose maybe from like a double end of things, and we were kind of saying like that really had can have came back to the back down. But like, what's maybe the like what going being there live? What big changes maybe have we seen maybe from years gone by? Because obviously when Jack McCaffrey came on, he brought a lot of life to it that needed that extra jolt. Make no doubt about it. But what's the big difference there for Dublin now going forward? Do you think? Um, look, I think I think there's a couple of things. I think the new lads coming in probably are not yet as good as the lads that they're replacing. Um, I suppose when you look at the old Dublin teams of the six in a row, like they had they had 15 of the best players in the country, like they're nearly the best player in the country in every position. They don't have that anymore. They have your, they have your cons and your um, Kilkenny's and these lads, and they've been to the well too. So like, I suppose there's they're not hopping off the ground at the moment. They're, they played well yesterday, but they're not... They're not what we're used to seeing with them. And look, I suppose it's a long season for those lads, especially they've been there so long. And I don't think they'll be too concerned with the fact that it was a close game. Um, I still think they they dug it out. And as you said, they brought on the, the couple of the vets and McCaffrey's last no turn of foot. So I think Desi, Desi will still be happy with the win and he'll be relying on the, the, the main boys in the bigger days, I think. Um, for Dublin, it's a case of getting out of this division, I think, and not not expending too much energy with those lads um, and having them fresh for championship. Um, 
as I suppose, look, their, their panel isn't as strong as it used to be, so they need their Fentons and they need Con and they need they need Kilkenny right for championship. And I think I think Desi will be quite happy where how this is going from so far. Mm, mm, yeah, for yeah, a lot of maybe Dublin supporters maybe saying they weren't overly pleased with the performance, but I think Cork really did show well yesterday. But I suppose confident coming away from it, Dan, and you know the rest of the league, you really should be maybe trying to get wins if you can pull up to a very very good Dublin outfit like that. Yeah, look, they'll they've Limerick next, and then they've Clare and Load away. Look, they'll be two hard games away to Clare. It's hard every day you go up there, and Load is a big trip up up that side of the country too. So look. I think you you see that throughout the national league. These away these away games take on life of their own. Um, and Wexford winning against Leitrim at home the other day, you know, they're just they're um they're a tough old slog. So look, I wouldn't be taking anything for granted, but you'd be definitely hoping that Limerick next week that Cork put in a, a big performance again and get a win there. Like that's that's a. Uh, if you want to, if you want to stay in this division, you have to do that. Not to mind, want to look at kind of progressing. So I think, look, huge, huge focus will have to be on. Forget about Dublin. No, take the positive from it and a huge game again next week in Parky Cueve. Yeah, move on to the next one. Brilliant stuff. Then I suppose we can touch on to action in Cusack Park. Ennis, it was Kildare, sixteen points. Clare. 15 points, a one-point win for Glenn Ryan's Kildare. He needed that win like anything. Um, great win. Obviously, I think I've seen a tweet there this morning that someone's given out that there was no highlights of the game. There should have probably been highlights of the game because it sounded like an absolute clinker, but RD, we'll say no more, Dan, but a one-point win for Kildare. Yeah, one point, big big win for them from, from reading the match report. They were down four or five points and, and clawed it back. So, look... Um, Glen Ryan will be delighted with that, especially after, I suppose, the, the non-performance against Cork. Um, I think they came in for a lot of heavy, heavy criticism that day, how bad they were. So, look, um, it's the nature of the league. Again, that's a, that's a big win going down to Clare and, and coming out of there with the win, and he'll be delighted with that. And I suppose, look, you have you have three or four teams now in the middle of that group, Cork, uh, Kildare, Mead probably. Um all, all, all thinking that the next couple of games will either put them in a relegation push or sorry relegation fight or in a push for promotion so look the next the next round or two should be very interesting for this group I think look there's what Dublin and Derry are obviously the two outliers and then everyone else is fighting for either trying to get near a promotion spot or else relegation so um, interesting times ahead yeah, and obviously Old Cleary had a great game for Cleary last season. They're a marksman, but that was such a close game. It is such a pity that RT maybe didn't show highlights in the next Sunday. Surely there had to be a bit of a window there. But I know a lot of faithful, Clare faithful were quite annoyed, but Glenn Ryan will be absolutely thrilled with that win. Make no doubt about it because he badly needed the points. And we'll move on to RD. Dan, it was Loud 115, Limerick 113. Obviously a two-point win for Mickey Hart's Loud. The heartbreak goes on for Limerick in Division 2, Dan. That's the third loss in a row. But in fairness, what Dublin, Loud, well, probably could have got the win maybe yesterday, but they'll be kicking themselves and obviously Derry they came up against. So Limerick have had a very, very challenging start. Next game, a few games might be winnable. I know obviously Cork would be quite tight, but Loud, two-point win. Sam Roy started the show once again. Yeah, yeah. Look, he's, um, I suppose, the consistency he's showing over the last couple of years. Um fairness to him, it's, it's serious going and Mickey Hart will be delighted getting a first win. Um, Limerick, I watched him in the McGrath Cup, final, McGrath Cup final. They were under pressure. I thought Cork were well on top of them and I think Limerick's, Limerick's problem is up front, struggling to get scores. Um, and I suppose, look, as we said as well, they've, they've had the, the hard side of the fixtures, Dublin, Derry and Lode as well. Like Even, I suppose, there's no easy game in that league, but when you're starting off after losing your first two against Dublin Derry, um, they were all going to be up against it. And look, it should it should be no easier for them next week against Cork either. So um, it's a game, it's, it's, it'll be a dangerous game for Cork. Limerick will be fighting for their lives. So um, as, as we said, Cork can't take anything for granted. And I suppose no load will be looking. Can they push on and get get a few wins? And I suppose they're in that that middle bracket of this group. And I suppose they'll be like Cork now, Clare. All on two points. Me have four points. Would have been under pressure. So it's it's, go, it's going to be interesting. It's um, as I said, the next the next couple of weeks are going to tell a lot in this division. Mm. Yeah, no, that's a great win for Loud. I obviously tipped it'll, Limerick. Um, maybe get, uh, uh, yeah, yeah no, I'll take points off Derry. Like so that I suppose if Derry 
uh, my thinking would be if Derry knock knock over Dublin, it'll be Dublin Derry promoted. That'll be my kind of view on it. Yeah, yeah. I oh, yeah, I think indicators are definitely looking at. I think I think Derry will just keep winning. I know obviously maybe when they come up against Dublin, it could be a very tight game, but I just think Rory Gallagher is just. Yeah, I think he's bringing out serious stuff. Yeah, he is in fairness. Yeah, and uh, I nearly fancy Derry against Dublin at the moment. The way things are going. Yeah. Yeah, I think Rory Gallagher will love that, uh, you know, that experience and that atmosphere alone, and he'd love to kind of test himself against the best. So, yeah, I think in current form, you'd definitely give Derry a huge chance in that game, Dan. And then we'll, <clears throat> we'll move on to Division sure. One. Act. One thing we've talked about this before, like the the, the, the non coverage of the lower divisions is a disaster. For we talked there about the shop window for Jay, and you can't get a proper highlights of each game, even at a five ten minute clip of all the scores, even if you had an hour and a half program or something, you know, it's just it's a pity because, um, yeah, and like I was watching League Sunday last night and I was just thinking to myself, like, Eva, it was Ivan Nikwilon that was presenting it, and like you can feel she's under such a time constraint, she was kind of going through games and stuff and not really giving them proper attention and care into detail. I know Peter Canavan and Kieran Whelan were definitely trying their best, but it's yeah. clear to be seen they need a bit of a shake up. Yeah, it's like I don't think the analysis bar the bar the top games. You don't need analysis this time of year. You just want to see you want to see yeah. the game. You know, yeah. um, like say, look the like they showed the Fermanagh and Down game. Like that looked like a belter of a game. Like yeah, you know, you're the five five like TG Cahir do the best they can. In fairness, they nearly show every score from every game on their Monday yeah. night. Program. Like if yeah, I'm sure there's a stretch that you could have an hour and a half show where you just get every score. A roundup of every score the, from play the, of the of the the week, like you know, to be yeah. good viewing as anything, like you can take what you want from it. Then, yeah, yeah, and as well as I suppose, even with the shake up already you've had with pundits and you know the time to put into it, you think there should be even a, a midweek as as TJ Carr are doing a Monday night tonight. You know, to show the highlights, you think you maybe on a Tuesday or Wednesday or there has to be a bit of a window to show like an extra highlights or more insight because. There's some excellent that likes Lee Keegan's obviously gone in there, the likes Keir Wheel and Peter Canavan, like the, the right men in place. I think they should be utilized a bit more, but yeah, look, yeah. Me, me, yeah. a high length program and an analysis program, like you could nearly have two two segments that like turn it. There are national sports, like it, it deserves more than an hour and a half of a week, do you know. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pity now because uh, I can obviously see the constraints that uh, Mr. or Mrs. Nee Quillan find herself under, but that is what RT are going forward with, Dan. And we're well used to it, unfortunately. And we will move on to status action, Dan, in Division 1 in Hastings, McHale Park. It was Mayo 214, Kerry 110. Great win for Mayo. Kevin McStay was buzzing after the game. The David Clifford show, I think he came on, kicked four points. Looked like he probably too many fires to put out by the time he was on. I'm not sure will Jack and Connor be reading too much into that result, but Mayo, are they going to win Sam, Dan? Um, or did they win Sam on Saturday night with the buzz? <laughs> there's, no, uh, there's no all Ireland's one in um, February looking. Max, Max Day will be fully aware of that. Um, like To be fair to Mayo, they're a great league team like because they play with such intensity and ferocity. Um, yeah. And especially up there, you will not, if you're not at the races up in Castle Bar, they'll they'll tear you apart like that. You know they'll have the they have the crowd behind them. There must have been twenty thousand at that game. Um, and you know they're they're hungry. They're always hungry for success up there. So Kerry went up with probably missing three or four of the big guns, and I suppose a long journey and weren't at the races and and may may have punished them accordingly. Um, and you can definitely see. Look, Max Day is trying to imprint his own kind of. Um, his own stamp on it. He's looking at Loftus centre back. Doing a good job for him so far. Um, Aidan O'Shea is playing well. I suppose he struggled with the last couple of years, but new role inside, winning ball, and I suppose kind of smart ball that they're putting into him to these 30 yard kick passes. And look, they're, they're playing well at the moment. They have a lot of fellas going well, and they're unearthing a couple of fellas as well. Um, so I think Kevin McStay will be happy. And we've always said this about Mayo. Mayo, even in the All Ireland series, will be dangerous for anyone because on a given day, they can. They have this as we they have this intention intensity to match it with the best of them. Um so look, I suppose they'll be happy they haven't lost the game yet. They have two draws and a win. Um Ryan I don't know who's playing well. And from a carry point of view, I think Jack won't be panicking, but I, I think it just shows the reliance on David Clifford and Sean O'Shea. Um 
especially David Clifford. Um, there's an argument if he was in any other county in the Division One, they they'd be fancying themselves for an All Ireland too. That's how good he is. Um, he he wouldn't carry that All Ireland last year when it came down to it. He carried him over the line, and um, yeah, it'll be. I suppose Jack won't be worry. He won't be. I suppose having sleepless nights yet, but there's definitely a bit of a worry there. I'd say. Yeah, I was only remarking that Johnny Johnny Murder, our fellow pundit earlier on, that like maybe without Sean O'Shea and Dave Clifford, I know they're absolutely fantastic footballers, maybe Paddy Clifford to a degree as well, but it does go to show there is a bit of a clink in the chain when them pair of gentlemen aren't about. Sorry, John, I had a phone call now. No problem. Yeah, no, I was, I was just saying that there's a bit of a clink in the chain uh, when the likes of, I know obviously Sean O'Shea and Dave Clifford are remarkable footballers, but you know, without them gentlemen, Kerry do, I wouldn't say look quite ordinary, but, you know, they're huge misses. Yeah, they are, look, uh, well, look, Clifford, Clifford is a massive loss for them. He's probably guaranteed either, like you saw when he came on, the difference he made, he's guaranteed seven or eight points a game, like, and <clears throat> I suppose uh, uncharacteristically then, I don't know, Shane, Shane Murphy got caught with a, a short kick out for the first goal and Tyg Morley kicked away a ball, like, and Mayo twice punished him you know, with a, with sloppy turnovers, and suppose you you can see two goals uh, in the first half to Mayo up there, and it's it's a tall order because they they smelt blood and they they just didn't relent and um, or they didn't wilt, they just kept going, and yeah, look, um, I, it's it's an interesting one for Jack. I think he just wants to get the league out. He'll want to get the, he'll be a bit like Dublin now. He'll want to get the league out of the way and have have everyone ticking for championship. It's it's a long. It's a long season to sustain two years in a row winning leagues and championships and going flat out to win a league again and then being right for the championship. We saw Tyrone struggled with it a bit as well last year. So I think he'll just be a case of get, getting his big guns ready for the championship season and getting through this league unscathed. Mm, yeah, no, it was definitely very impressive. So it was performance by Mayo and obviously maybe when Sean O'Shea and Dave Clifford did come on, maybe Mayo... I suppose maybe they stood off Clifford to agree, which was quite astonishing because Clifford was kicking points maybe to beat the band, but I think there was there was too many fires to put on put out at that stage. But you know, it was a very impressive uh, Mayo performance overall then. Yeah, it was. Um I think to be honest with you, I think they tried to double mark Clifford and they just still oh. couldn't contain him. Nice um, joke, yeah. Yeah, but look, um James Carr is in a good vein of form at the moment. He's on oh, yeah, yeah. for goal. Uh Jordan Flynn's playing well. Um yeah. I think got four points from play. He was all over the place. Um, right. Like they've they've the bones of a, a strong team there, and I suppose look, um, if they keep this form up, I don't think there'll be many teams fancy playing the meter. You know, um, they'll get a kick off next day as well. Um, and as as they proved year on year on year, the hunger doesn't win with them anyway. So if they're still starved for that all Ireland, so that they're going to be dangerous this year. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. They will be the way with that result at the weekend because Kevin McStay, obviously two draws so far, so we'll be thrilled with that. And then we'll move on to Sunday's action, Dan, in Clonus. It was Monaghan, 120, Donegal, 15 points. The heartbreak goes on for Donegal. Obviously, Paddy McBurdy will be out for the rest of the league with a bad, bad hamstring injury. Dan, Paddy Carr did not plan for that. Um, bit of disaster loss, and we obviously wish Paddy the best with his recovery. But Monaghan... Very good kicking. Conor Glans came on at the end, kicked a couple of points. He was delighted after the game. Mon and badly needed that win, Dan. They sure did, yeah. And look, um, I suppose the same thing. They had a, a tough outing in Clarny two weeks ago. Um, again, the old, the old home and away for the the northern teams versus the southern teams is tough going. And um, back up in Clonus, really went for the game, wanted it. Um, and I suppose really pushed on the last 10 minutes. There was, I think they kicked six or seven of the last eight scores and I suppose really pushed on. Um McCarron was back up front as well from injury and lo- looked lively. Um and as you said, look Paddy Paddy McGuerty is a huge loss. I think he even has a he's a hamstring operation or a disease it's gone. So yeah. He'd be best for him to be back for championship even and I suppose even Donegal things are looking at worrying for them scoring difference even for relegation purposes. They're under mm-hmm. they're under a lot of pressure now, yeah. And it's um I suppose, look, Monaghan probably would have targeted this game as one they had to win and I suppose they played like that and Hughes was good kind of playing as a wing-back stroke sweeper and they broke fast up front and they have a lot of pace up front still. Um, so, yeah, look, they, they'll be delighted with that. Vinnie Corey will be delighted with this win. 
Mm, yeah, Monaghan definitely did need that win. And obviously, I think they were probably expected to get the win, especially with McBrady's injury as well. But Finney will be delighted with that. You know, Monaghan did have a very tough start to the league. And all probably signs still point or might point to Monaghan just about saving their bacon within this league, Dan. But they have a few tricky fixtures ahead. Yeah, they do. And through the years, they've been the kings of it, um, in fairness yeah, yeah. to them. Um, yeah. And, you know, we've, for such a small county and numbers wise, they like they maximize every single drop of what they have in that county, in fairness to them. Um, you know, how many years have we been writing them off and saying that, you know, they're under pressure now and look, they're coming again. And um, look, you, you'll, ne- you'll never get anything easy off Monaghan. And I suppose they'll, they've put themselves in a position now that they'll have a chance of staying up and again the next next three or four weeks will be massive for them mm. yeah it'll, I think it'd be one of the greatest miracles to do it this year but we will wait and see obviously Conor McManus on RTE radio yesterday saying he was delighted with the win uh, two points is big especially finally getting the two points on the board so Conor was definitely not getting too ahead of himself but it's great to see Conor McManus back because he's one of the best players we've seen this be- play this beautiful game Dan and then we'll move on to Tum Stadium Galway 16, 16 points Tyrone 13 points. Obviously, I was definitely tipping Tyrone last week. Obviously, with Galway's men that they're down, but Tune Stadium, as Mr. Finn and Ian Hanley was saying yesterday, is a nightmare for this goal. Yeah, I've been there no once or twice. Um, so you, won't, you you can't see your ankles there at this time of year, not mind anything else. Um, yeah, Galway, look, just dug this one out. You just said they didn't do enough with the wind. Um, and I suppose they, they took over the third quarter then and I suppose pushed on and I think went six, seven points up on Tyrone and it was it was almost too late for Tyrone. Then Tyrone tried to mount a bit of a comeback, but the, the third quarter, um, they just fell asleep for too long. And I suppose worryingly for them is they're they're conceding scores through the middle. And I suppose the the ease at which Galway got into the D against a strong breeze and clipped over scores will be a worry for them. Um Matthew Tierney obviously had a great game and stepped up really when when Comer and Shane Walsh were missing. So um, I think Quarra Joyce will be delighted with that game. You could even see him on the line. He was animated. He, they Galway really wanted this win, and um, I suppose look, they were full value for it. So it's Tyrone obviously coming away from it as well, Dan. They will be disappointed, and Tyrone will need as much points as possible. Pretty much like Mon and Donegal, I think maybe a sign of maybe missed opportunity. I know obviously Galway they kick sixteen points, but I think I just get that feeling Brian Dewar would have liked the win yesterday, especially with the main goal we were down. Absolutely, and look, they weren't efficient up front either. I think they had 30 shots, um, you know, at the target, like, and to only come away with 13 points would be disappointing for them. And I don't know, they just, they don't seem to have clicks since they've won this All-Ireland. They seem to be lacking something. I can't put my finger on it, but um, they haven't got over the hangover yet, you know, for the for the quality of players that they had and how well they played to win that All-Ireland. Um so look, yeah, they're going to have to dig deep and again, you'd expect them, this is a very tight division, like I'm just looking at it here, there, mm. like there's from second, there's two points between second to eight, like so look, it's, it's a very tight division and um, all of these, all the teams in this division are going to be fighting for their lives really, with the exception of Ross Common, of course, as you as you predicted boldly a couple of weeks ago to me on the, on the WhatsApp. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A hundred percent, man. I'm, I'm, I'm still. I, every time they win a game, I keep giving you, I keep giving you a hint about that. So we'll wait and see there for Connacht. But moving on to the next game, Dan is right. Doctor Hyde Park, Ross Common, one twelve, Armagh twelve points, Dan. And this most common form is going to keep going on. Three wins out of three. David Burke is, as, as I said, you weeks and months ago that he's going to get a serious bounce. He's getting a serious bounce. Him and Mark McHugh embrace each other after the game. Got the job done. Great win, especially against a tricky Armagh team. Yeah, absolutely. I watched the first half. I missed the second half because I was going through the game. But um, yeah, I, I I thought I thought Armagh were in control at halftime. Um, I'd be probably could have been a bit further ahead in the scoreboard, but again against the wind, Ross Common dug it dug it out, and um, I suppose the penalty was the 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 main difference between the teams. Um. Funny one when you watch the highlights, he got his hand on the ball, but I say I still think he probably fouled him. But look, and, and the Smith finished it well, and yeah. um, look, they're strong. Like um, I think Davy Bar will be happy as well. They're they're finding players like you know they had Ben Carroll and um Sean Jones. These lads you wouldn't have heard of much of before, and they came up with nearly one fight between them. So 
look, um, he'll be very happy how things are going. And you can see it in his interviews. He, he's really feeling the buzz off it. He's flying it at the moment, Davy Burke. So, yeah, yeah. look, um, they're on the crest of a wave. Um, and look, I'm not sure who, who did they have next. I'm not sure, to be honest. Russ Common have Kerry. No, oh God. Uh, Russ Common have a lot of minute bear with me. Uh, yes, Russ Common have Monaghan this Sunday. Yeah, look, they they they'll be looking they'll be looking to win that too. So look, it's um yeah. interesting to see can they keep the momentum going. But look, they've obviously been the story of the league so far. Um, so as Armagh will be disappointed, they'd have probably seen this as a game that they they think they should be winning as well. And Torben had a chance near the end, just snatched it a little bit, could have gone anywhere. And um, yeah, look, um, this is the nature of the league, though, isn't it? It's uh, their tight margins, all especially Division One, their tight margins. A lot of these games, um, and it just shows, yeah, if you're not at the races, you get exposed, um, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think even from the Armagh perspective, I think Kieran McGeaney will be pretty disappointed. And obviously, Kieran Donny, I was listening to him on the radio yesterday, he didn't seem like a happy bunny either. He was really going for the win. But it's common, it's a tricky place to go to. But I think Armagh, Barry, O'Neill up front, and I said this to you yesterday, I think yeah. forward wise, I think they're lacking. Yeah, I think yeah, I think so. Yeah, they're la- they're probably lacking a scorer or two, aren't they? They're lo- the the they're lacking someone with that little clinical cut, like aren't they? Yeah, yeah, uh, or even like a Stevie McDonald, Ronan Clark, Oshie yeah, McConnell. Yeah, like, exactly. like I think I think Ray O'Neill in fairness is very much like that Oshie McConnell type, but a Ronan Clark, a Stephen McDonald, I know. Yeah, it's they're, tri- they're, yeah, yeah. They're very uh, systematic in how they attack, and they're they're yeah. very they're very good at it, but. They have yeah. no kind of outside the box um, kind of fella that can change things like, um, you know, Shane, not the same Ilka player, but a Shane Walsh or a Clifford. They've no one that kind of has that bit, bit extra, or that bit of a, a difference maker at the moment. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so I just think down the track of St. Johnny earlier on, Higarmau may struggle, but we will wait and see, Dan, and we will move on uh, to this weekend's fixtures and we will get the ball rolling with the, where are we now? Yeah, Division 4. Yeah, perfect. So on Saturday night in Division 4, <coughs> round 4, you have Waterford against Wexford in Setu Arena, Carcanor at 4 pm, and then in to do, do you have Leash v Wicklow in Leash Higher or Moor Park at 7 pm, and then on Sunday in Division 4 action, you have London against Sligo in Rice Lip at 1 pm. So Tony McAtee may get the bags packed for the weekend, and all right, the wife probably does it for him, uh, like any good man. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll move on to Leitrim. Uh, sorry, Tony, McAtee, his wife, if you're watching, uh, Leitrim against Carlo in a fan money park, Sean McDermott at 2 pm, and Andy Moran will be looking to get a win there, especially after last weekend. And then we will move on to Division 3. Uh, you have Antrim against Fermanagh in Carrigan Park at 2pm. That'll be a game worth keeping an eye on. And then you have Down against Westmead in Park Esther at 6pm on Saturday. And then we'll move on to the other Division 3 games. You have Offaly against Cavan in Glenisk, O'Connor Park at 2pm. Away fixture for Mickey Graham's men, so let's see how it goes. And then we have Longford against Tipperary, Glennon Brothers, Pierce Park at 2 p.m. And then we'll do, um, obviously, briefly move on to Division 2 action. You have Kildare against Derry in Newbridge at 2 p.m. on Sunday, Dan, and it'll be live on the BBC iPlayer. That game ooh, has a bit of bite to it. You can feel it already. Yeah, big, big game now for Kildare, I suppose, after being poor against Cork at, at Newbridge. Newbridge is a bit of a fortress for them, so um, you'd imagine they'll be well up for this game and look, another big challenge for Derry. Um, they've coped with everything that's been thrown at them so far, but the league is funny. Anything anything could happen here if Kildare are on, the, are on their game, so um, an interesting one. It, tentatively for the crack and make the thing a bit in- interesting for the Division 2 you'd, you'd like to see Kildare get a result here good for Cork as well yeah 100%, 100%. yeah yeah I think the odds might be juicy in that I think Derry but oh Rory Gallagher that'll be a stiff test but Kildare against Cork last day it didn't prove Newbridge didn't uh, yeah. prove much advantage to them and then yeah. we'll move on to meet against Loud in Park Talton 2pm home home advantage for Mr Conor O'Rourke's men yeah, look, and um, you've no doubt Colm O'Rourke will be expecting and demanding reaction. Um, and look, if, if you'd, I, I'd fancy I'd fancy me here to turn up and right the wrongs last week. Um, I think Colm O'Rourke will 
put in a lot of focus this week on turning up to perform and I think they might have a small bit too much of a load here. Mm. Oh, big one for you, Dan. Cork against Limerick in Park Cueve at quarter to four and that game will be in, yeah, quarter to four. So there we go, Dan. Yeah, look, um, I suppose if Cork, if Cork bring their A game, um, they, they should get over the line. No, I suppose Cork and Limerick have played each other a lot over the last couple of years and they've been tight affairs. So, uh, they're they're very used to each other. They they know each other's style of play. They know that they're they're well familiar with each other. But look, Cork Cork, if uh, if they bring their A game, you'd be hoping to get off the line there. Mm, you know, the stuff. And then on Saturday, Dan in Division Two, you've Dublin against Clare in Crow Park at seven p.m. Is this game where we see the floodgates open? Um. You'd expect Dublin to win. I don't know when you see the floodgates opening, but you'd expect Dublin to win. Um, I suppose um, Collins will have Clare set up well enough that typically he won't want the floodgates opening. You know they're a good Division Two team and yeah. they'll keep it tight at the back. And they're 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 a good they're a good like they know what they're about. And I don't know when you see the floodgates opening here, but you'd ex- still expect Dublin to win by four or five points maybe. But um, I, I don't see them. I don't see them walking away with this game. Mm, yeah, it's funny. As the years have went on, Dan, a couple of years ago, that game would have been fairly not a great spectacle. But we will wait and see on Saturday night, and then move on to the Division One action, Dan. In round four, you have Kerry against Armagh in Austin Stock Park at five pm. Of course, the game will be live on RT Two and the RTE player. Bit of bite to this game, Dan. Bit of bite to chat and look. Um, the rally cries will come from Kerry. No, you'll have a big crowd there. Um, the fact, the fact, Donny, he's with Armagh as well. It'll bring a yeah. small bit of voice to it. Um, yeah, yeah. If if Jack goes down the line of wanting to win this game and puts out Clifford and um, Sean O'Shea and a couple of more the the big guns, then I think Kerry will be hard to beat down there. Um, should be a great game. Um, but yeah, again the the big journey for Armagh on a Saturday. Um, Kerry, having been kind of embarrassed a bit this week, I think they'll they'll be all guns blazing for this. Um, and I, I think they'll be hard beat down there. Is this the game where we see Sean O'Shea and David Clifford start then? <sighs> it's it's a tricky one for Jack. I, like to be fair, like you don't you don't want to get in a situation where you're you're fighting for relegation either, and you still want to make sure. You have the most out of Dave Clifford and Sean O'Shea at the right time of the year, but I think I think he'll play them. I think he'll he won't be taking our man for granted. He knows they're a good league team, um, and that um, they, they'll be well up for this game. And I think Jack's going to have to go for this game. Yeah, yeah. As Mr. Burns used to say in The Simpsons, release the hounds. And I think we're going to be seeing the hounds this weekend. I get that feeling. Poor Johnny Murda might be in for a bit of a shock. And we will move on to Mayo against Throne in Hastings, McKenna Park at 7 pm. Of course, the game will be live on TG Car. Oh, see the title beat Throne this weekend, Dad? Um, I suppose they Mayo are hard to beat at home always. Um, Tyrone again will be probably hungry for a win. Um, they're usually tight games between Tyrone and, and Mayo, but you'd have to give Mayo the home crowd, the big crowd again, probably. Um, probably give Mayo this game as well by a couple of points. Mm, yeah, I think that big guy up front might get them over the line once again. And we'll move on to Sunday's action, Dan, nice and early. You've done a goal against Galway in Letterkenny at half 12 on TG Carr. Yeah, look, um, you'd have thought this was a tighter game a couple of weeks ago, but I think I suppose the injuries Donegal have picked up, and I think Galway are showing that they're they're more than a flash in the pan. No, you know, there's a bit of substance behind them. Um, I, I I'd expect Galway to go up to Letterkenny and, and get a win here. Um, not sure we see Shane Walsh. Will he get? Will he make some sort of an appearance this weekend? Um, not sure how long Comer's out for. I didn't actually see what the extent of the injury was after. Oh, God, yeah. I don't think it, it, it's, it's not as bad as the first fear. I don't yeah, think it's as yeah. bad as people thought, yeah. Yeah, but look, I think um, I think Gal- Galway are, um, I suppose they're maturing a bit now and they're they're developing a squad. So, yeah. I'd, uh, and I suppose the troubles Donegal are facing, I'd probably see Galway eat this up by a couple of points. 
think so too, Dan. And big game this weekend. Monaghan against Roscommon in Clonus at half two. Roscommon on the real crest of a wave. Monaghan definitely need the points. Oh, it's, it's an interesting one, especially in Clonus. Yeah, I'd go with Monaghan and this, to be honest with you. Okay. I'd, yeah, I think they'll build on this week. Um, they're hard to beat in Clonus. Um, and they'll take a, a good deal of confidence from how they finished the game yesterday. Um, the old Ross Common away from home um, aren't as strong, obviously, you know, as, as they're home. They're not as strong as they're at home. Um, hard to keep it going four weeks, getting four wins in a row in this league is tough going. I just have a feeling that maybe Monaghan might pick them. They might want it a bit more. Mm, yeah, I think they could definitely be doing with the points. Great stuff, Dan. Nicely wrapped up. And um, just a bit of housekeeping before we jump off. Uh, the GA.E team of the week was announced today, this morning, and I will go through it. In goal to Dara Brooks from Wexford, fullback line of Kildare's Mick O'Grady, Bruce Commons, Connor Daly, and Mayo Zed Hessen. Half back line of Monaghan's Darren Hughes, Derry's Pork McGrogan, and Dublin's Dara. Uh, diary, I can't pronounce that. <laughs> I think it's a Dara Newcomb. Uh, is it Dara Newcomb? I think. Newcomb, uh, yeah. yeah, Newcomb, yeah. And midfield of Mills, Jordan Flynn, and Galway's Match Tierney. And then the half forward line of Armaz, Jason Duffy, Leach's Paul Kingston, and Monaghan Stephen O'Hanlon. And then this man is absolutely ripping it up for Leach from Keith Byrne. Huge shout out to him. He is fine. It's so well done to Keith. Uh, full forward of Darren McCorn and then completing it was Cork's Brian Hurley. Any surprises there, Dan, or as expected? Um, yeah, as expected. Um, match match of Tierney was probably the, I wouldn't say the biggest surprise, but um, I suppose the big plus for Galway. Um, he's been on the periphery of some games last year, you know, he's, but like I suppose, with, as I said, with Walsh and Comer missing, he really stepped up yesterday and Picked some massive scores and won some great ball in the air as well. Um, I suppose he's been touted for a long time as one of, one of the players to watch and I suppose he delivered on that yesterday. Yeah, very strong team there. And then, of course, the GA.E football nominees for Player of the Week is Galway's Match Tierney, Mayo's Jordan Flynn and Monaghan Stephen O'Hanlon. Who are you tipping your hat to there then? I'd probably go Tierney, yeah. Yeah, I suppose in the, in the elements. Um I suppose, and uh, probably big win for Galway. They need they needed that win. Um, I suppose look, he delivered more than any fella for Galway yesterday. Mm, perfect stuff. And as usual, Dan, uh, your bet of the weekend. A player to watch this weekend. Oh, bet of the weekend. Um, I go man him to beat Ross Common. Okay, that'll okay. be my tip. Of the, yeah, tip of the weekend. Um, there goes me and your little personal thing about Ross Common. But fair enough, Dan. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, player to watch then. Um, oh, um, Clifford, if he's back on the pitch, obviously just to watch him. I'm not tipping that. It's not a surprise that you'd expect him to shoot the lights out, but just watching him the other day, my God, he just doesn't wilt. He's le- he's lethal. Um, every, t- every time he's in front of goal, you know what's going to happen. He's oh, he's a freak. Yeah, he- he's the one to watch. As in purely not to tip that he's going to be brilliant, but just to watch him. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just from from Cork's point of view, then there's the lad Luke Fahey from Ballincollig. I was very impressed with him yesterday. It'll be interesting to see. You no know, wing back, um, extremely comfortable on the ball. It'll be interesting to see if he backs that performance up against Limerick personally. But um, yeah, yeah. I was very, very, very impressed with him um, as a newcomer uh, yesterday. So look, that's just a little personal point of view. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. Great stuff, Dan. I suppose to wrap up on Friday, uh, Jared Burns has been announced as the new president of the GA. Of course, we're replacing Larry McCarty now in a few weeks. Your thoughts on Jared getting the highest gig in the GA possible? Yeah, look, I suppose it was coming. Um, he missed out by a couple of votes last time around, um, and he pretty much walked it this time, I think, by the voting. Um, yeah, yeah to, to be interesting, he's always been kind of at the forefront of the politics side of the Jay since he retired and um, he's pretty strong views like uh, even I saw in his interview uh, signing the Sunday game looking at the amateur status and preserving that just you know he he's definitely not going to be just um, in there to be representative for the Jay anyway he'll want to put his own stamp in it um, and look it'll be interesting to see what he's planned um, as I said in the Sunday game last night you can't change too much in three years and they have there's already a strategy in place to follow but he definitely won't be in there quietly anyway. 
Yeah, one well, of the very best wishes to Charlotte Burns as he takes on uh, the new role. Obviously, Dan. Arman 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 surely, no, Armal will Nuller in the next three years, surely. 100%. Armal's going to get everything, and we, Johnny Murta, our fellow J Mac podcast pundit, will be delighted with that. And Dan, have to ask you before you go Billy Morgan uh, wins the Nugger Sigerson Cup uh, for UCC. What a legend. Yeah, what a legend is right. Um, he's he's unreal. Um, I think someone said, is it 50, 59 titles he's been involved in winning something crazy like that, was it? Between playing career and management. Um, yeah, his just like his his hunger for Jay and for I suppose especially in UCC you now the last number of years getting the best out of the young fellas. Look, he's he's done it all as a player. He's done it all as an county manager, and he's still at seventy eight years of age, like delivering on a fairly important and serious competition. And you know, like doing a great job in it. And I think even watching them all through with the kind of uh, I watch I watch most UCC games. He yeah. just instills that passion in them. They won three games, two games of penalties and won an extra time. Like, you know, he, he's just got a, a crazy passion for the game and he can he can direct that to his players, you know. Um, and there's nearly a case if you're playing for him, you don't want to let him down. Like, and I suppose there's not too many people in the J have that. So, look, um, he's a tour de force and there's not too many of them around. Hmm. Yeah, kind of like a Paul Duchet type character or like a, a Mick O'Dwyer, but Billy Morgan, fair play to you at the age of 78. I don't know what me and you, Dan, are going to be at now, but we will wait and see. We will wait and see. Probably, probably a couple of toes in bed, Dan. Dan, you're yeah. going, it is great to see you again, my man. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on this week. And of course, the podcast is brought to you by yourgrace.com. Use the program JMAC podcast to get 15% off on their website. Dan, you thank you very, very much. Here's John, we'll, we'll talk soon. Cheers, buddy.